Hello guys, this is Good Like, and we're back to Let's Go, like, three and a half months, it's probably four months at this point. In reality, it hasn't actually been four months. I did some work, as you can see, before Christmas, when I was at my mom's, actually, just visiting and, uh, had some time, so I decided I'll work on it. And then I never worked on it again for a long time. So I realized that d doing a video before every session that I go to code is extremely limiting. I just never feel like it anymore because I know I have to first sit down and record. And I don't know why, but it just causes me a bunch of anxiety. I had to psychologically fight myself at this point to just make this video. So fuck this shit. We're going to wrap up the sprint, do a review or whatever, and then probably close down the series. Now, we'll continue working on this stuff in the background and maybe make a video every now and then when any progress is made, but I'm definitely not going to make a regular series out of it. I started this series because I wanted to motivate myself to work on this project, but at this point, the series is getting more in the way than actually helping. On one hand, I can almost certainly guarantee that I will finish the project because it's always on my mind that, oh yeah, I have the series, but I can't guarantee that I'll finish it in this decade at this rate. <laughs> So that's not good enough. You, there's no point if we have to wait that long. I'd rather sit down and do some work separately whenever I just feel like it. Which actually, strangely enough, recently I've had a lot more energy than usual. Ever since my vacation. Was it the vacation? I don't know. But I've read some books and web novels that I've been putting off for ages. And we actually have a scrum master in the team that I work at now. So. I'd say just about every reason to continue this series is perished. But I will finish it, at least the first sprint. I mean, it, it gave me a reason to talk about some things and think them over. Uh, various subjects that I covered throughout these videos, so I think it's a good thing. I also showed how fucking annoying it is to set up a project sometimes. <laughs> anyway, uh, you may have noticed this comment I put in my uh, Let's Code TXT. Like and dislike insurance. This is just a weird way to phrase it, but uh, a long time ago, I was thinking about one particular issue, and the issue was a lot of people seem to have their likes and dislikes disappear. So I thought of an idea. You know, you could have like an app that just keeps liking or disliking the video if if it gets removed just keeps going back and checking and reporting even to you if if the likes disappear or whatever it keeps doing it uh, it's a cool idea i don't know that i would make such an app or would have it as a part of youtube sub box probably not but uh it's an idea for you guys you do it if i do it it's gonna be done like Five years from now, at that point, who knows if this will even be relevant. I could remove likes and dislikes. <laughs> you do it. You fucking do it. Uh, it's What do people call this? Homework? There we go. Homework for you. I'm, I'm sure that you have nothing else better to do than random app ideas. Alright, so next up, uh, let's just review what I did at, right before Christmas. This is, this looks sad. It's like I took six hours, but no, actually, I think I just did some during this period of time and then sat down again during this period of time. So maybe, maybe, maybe four or five hours. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Well, what do we have here? So I think I actually wrote down a lot of stuff. Additional ignore folders. It seems project directory can be randomly set by IntelliJ IDEA when importing the project to another computer. Which is a good thing that I actually did this. In my case, it defaulted to classes and did not get changed by refreshing Gradle. Manual adjustment of project treasure was required and it does not appear to be something the Gradle configuration can overwrite. But have some different property needs to be said instead of project.buildere. So basically, my original setup was I put everything in .build. But for some reason... IntelliJ idea overrides it when you import the project. So I just had to basically uh, put them in ignore so that they don't get in my way. Anyway, test it out, okay? HTTP transport using the YouTube API spike. 
Uh, I had not done this before, and what I did was I added the sources from my main project, all the stuff in the source main, didn't actually go to Spike. <laughs> so, so I had to add it here, basically. Take Spike compile, add all the sets from main. Yeah, it's, I, if I remember correctly, there were some issues with that. I had to Google this for quite some time. Uh, five minutes, man. Five minutes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's weird how it works, but now it works, I think. And obviously what I did was I replaced the net HTTP transfer that's default with the OK HTTP transfer to see if this even works. And it does. So, great. And I did some cleanup for assertions. Nothing special here. I just, uh, I believe I created, yeah, this, there was this, these assertions that were already written long time ago. Uh, as you can see, we went off to do some other stuff in the meanwhile of this, of this class. And yeah, basically I, Moved uh, all the assertions over to this. Uh, I really don't like this name. I'll probably do some renaming, but maybe I already did. Who knows? These are uh, just one of many. So let's not get into that too much. I right, look bad YouTube request spike. So what's this about? I don't even know. Apparently, I tried to do something bad with YouTube, and let's see what happens if if you run this spike. Maybe this will reveal the, the truth. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly perplexed, but I'm sure I could give you an explanation. It seems that uh, it works. Essentially, I think I was testing what would happen if I put uh, some kind of a value that's not supposed to go in there. So, for example, set page token probably expects... Uh, well, something from next page token. I don't know if nope is actually invalid value, though. That sounds like it could theoretically be right, but I believe that these tokens have very specific uh, limitations. Anyway, mocking in a separate package. This was basically just moving to a separate package. I think I may have extracted these classes out of uh, the inner class. So the next thing that I did is allow for... Not okay responses. In general, the point of all of these changes, if I remember correctly, not, not just this commit, but everything was to redo the mechanism of which we mock because one, I wanted not okay. I think that was the real point of the bad API, uh, recalls is I tried to make it not work. But then I just committed something at the end that works. So just, just to get a bad response and see how it looks like. And, uh, there we go. It just does some stuff to make sure that you can do other things than just okay. Uh, generalizing HTTP mocking to use input stream. Oh, well, that's just obvious. Instead of string response, you get input stream response and the input stream is then directly returned by the content the reason for this uh, is because i wanted to use files instead of just strings that i put in a test and you will see what came out of that this is a silly thing with uh, test directories basically things in test that are not test classes didn't get added to the resources so I have this test config, which has its own, like, you know, stuff that I want to be completely separate from the tests. But these mock classes have to be next to the test because they're basically 100% related. You can reuse, let's say, the good like 13 JSON, which is, as you can see, a JSON of a response, a very kind of a snippet uh, of a JSON response that you can actually get from the API. And, uh, yeah, the mock HTTP basically uses something to figure out which one to use, and I'll show you what it is. So these are not reusable. These will always be tied to a specific uh, test, more or less, the way I see it. But these, because they are just, you know, something like this, you can just get them all the time, no problem. Right, so I needed them to be in resources as well, or somewhere I could reach them, and then finally 
that was the way to do it. Basically filter out all the J Java classes and add everything else. The next was the change that you saw there. Basically, instead of using what we previously used, which we can see here, what was removed was this weird string-like annoying crap that also required a lot of things. Instead, we now use these simple JSON files. So basically, we just pass them into the mock and these will be the responses. And this allows us to determine what to do. So how does this work? If I remember correctly, this is something that has to be inside the path of the URL. And then this file will be returned for anything that has this parameter, q equals to let's code. And then this will be returned for everything else because it doesn't have anything else to match it. Usually, if I make a test, it will use the same API a lot. So it makes sense to put it up at the top where you start off everything. Whereas further down the line is what, what you'll get from that API and the queries determine which, which response are you going to get. Does that make sense, right? You know, our test is what? It's valid search. So with bad queries, then we have no search results. So we're going to call search without anything query. So we get the default response and then we're going to call search with this. And then we, we have this query and then we get this response. I, I, th I think it makes sense to me. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't make sense to you. We'll see. So I deleted to do and you, as you can see, I later added again. I don't know why I deleted it. We'll find out soon enough. This was just an update of versions. So probably need to do that again. Right. So I added some parameterized tests. Parameterized tests is a uh, Feature of JUnit 5 API. And you can see it here in the test for all consumers. How it works is you have this interface calls arguments provider. There's more different ways how to do it, but it's the most uh, intuitive one. You have an interface. The interface has a method. The method provides arguments. Then you use an annotation with the class that implements the interface and these parameters from here get passed into here. And for every line here, you will run the test once and it has a really nice showcase. So I'll probably look at that. Other than that, uh, you also need to add that this is opposite parameter test, just like in JUnit 4 or whatever you just, where you would add at test, in this case, use at parameterized test. I always do name equals this because if you don't do this, the default way that uh, IntelliJ IDEA or maybe even other cases handle it is they print the string of every single one of these test class, test method, but there's one layer deeper and that is the specific description, as you can see. Because I set the name to zero, it only takes this variable and YouTube channel search is the string. That's why it appears here like this. If I were to turn this off, here's the unfortunate result. Well, in this case, it's not bad because I still have this. But in practice, you would probably not have this variable and then you would just have this weird throwable API consumer lambda and that would tell you literally nothing. Uh, whereas this this makes not only it simple but it also makes it clear what what's this so you don't have to worry about figuring it out all right so that's what i did here basically i added some quota exceeded thing where where basically here again if a path has this which is going to be every single path ever you will return this response and you'll use this as the, uh, instead of 200 OK, which is, uh, I believe that's what I needed the, uh, bad YouTube request spike for basically to make sure that I can figure that out. That that's how it works. I don't think that I got quota exceeded though, because that would have required a lot of stuff, but I got like bad requests and similar. And then I looked up the uh, API on uh, Google API description somewhere on the internet. And I left a to do here to make sure I maybe eventually come back to this. I don't want to throw a fucking exception for these cases. 
Oh, maybe I do, but maybe I want to throw a very specific exception so that I can very specific catch it or something like that. Quota is actually particularly a really bad one for this because the way I imagine my application working toward the end is that I will provide a default API key, probably the same one that you can see in the spikes, but maybe a different one. And it will be somewhere in the configuration file. And if we, everyone just uses that API key, it, it will actually run out of quota. Assuming that there's more than one person using the fucking thing. <laughs> which, I don't know, maybe that'll never happen. But if it does happen, which is not impossible, I want the application to know about that. I want the application to warn the user, we can't use this key, you need to get a new key. Because if you don't, if you don't get your own key, it's just not going to work. Here I just moved some things around, I think, back, just nothing special. And fixed method order. Whoa, whoa, method order. I like how here it's named positive, but in the other one it's not negative or zebra. That, that's what I don't like. And finally, I added this to do. So I did remove the to do file and just added to do's across the board. I think that's the idea. I wanted to get rid of the to do file because I barely looked at it. It's just, it, I, I never actually looked at it. So it's pointless. But these to do's, I also almost never look at them, but at least they come up as I look at the code. So there's some chance that I'll actually fix it. And if it wasn't the file, there was zero chance. So that's better. As far as I'm concerned, that's my tip of the day, if, if you want to call it that. Anyway, what's what's up next? So I'm probably going to do a little bit of cleanup and uh, see what else needs to be done. As it's been three and a half months, as you can see, I'm a little bit uh, unsure about what the next step should be. Probably not this. This this can wait until we have a full-fledged application. Probably we'll just focus on getting as much done as possible to make the first fucking story finally work. Because we still don't have that. All this time later. Fuck me. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.